At her peak, Anita Ekberg was considered the most beautiful woman in the world, and Hollywood legends such as Tyrone Power, Frank Sinatra, and Yul Brynner just couldn't keep their hands off of her. But shortly before her death, she was ugly, destitute, and lonely, with hardly a soul caring about her. How exactly did she rise so high, only to fall so far? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. On September 29, 1931, in Malmo, Sweden, Kirsten Anita Marianne Ekberg was born to Alva Maria Larsen and Gustav Frederick Ekberg. She was the sixth of eight children. Right from an early age, Anita's beauty was self-evident. She subsequently began to work as a fashion model. In 1950, at the age of 19, her mother strongly urged her to participate in the Miss Malmo beauty pageant. This turned out to be a great idea as she emerged the flawless victor. She then qualified for the Miss Sweden beauty pageant, which she also won. As a result, she qualified for the Miss Universe beauty pageant held in America. Now, winning Miss Sweden was one thing, but Miss Universe was a whole other ball game. Was it really smart for the teenage Anita to put herself out there like that? Could she really handle the pressure? Well, even though the 20-year-old Anita didn't speak a word of English at the time, she still traveled to the U.S. to represent her country. Though she did not walk away with the grand prize, she got something that was just as wonderful, if not more so. As one of the six finalists of the contest, she was awarded a starlet contract with Universal Studios. In the blink of an eye, she had gone from a Swedish local to a movie star in the making. Under her starlet contract, Anita was to undergo lessons in drama, elocution, dancing, horseback riding, and fencing. However, she did not take her education seriously at all. Rather than study, she instead preferred to have fun. To that end, she always went horse riding in the Hollywood Hills. In 1953, when she was 22 years old, Anita appeared in a handful of movies alongside some major Hollywood stars. This included Tyrone Power, Anne Sheridan, Rock Hudson, and Piper Laurie. Anita was getting the start in Hollywood that most actresses could only dream of, However, she did not know how lucky she was and took everything that was happening to her for granted. Now, Universal may have seen a star in Anita, but was it really wise of them to have her running around like that? Especially with little to no supervision whatsoever? By Anita's own admission, she allowed the old Hollywood star system to completely ruin her. She partied hard without working hard. When the executives at Universal Studios realized Anita had no ambition and that she was not pushing for better roles, they knew they had made a bad investment in her. As a result, just six months after her contract started, they dropped her from their lineup. Now, most other actresses in this situation would be in a remarkable load of trouble. With nothing else going on for them, they would have been forced to return to their parents' homes in disgrace. But as for Anita, she had a multitude of options. Even though she was a lousy actress, she had a great personality, and the entirety of Hollywood had fallen for her. Because of her numerous affairs with some of Hollywood's most powerful men, Anita was never not in the news. She managed to rap such icons as Errol Flynn, Rod Taylor, Frank Sinatra, Yul Brynner, and Tyrone Power around her fingers. With Tyrone Power in particular, the affair between the two of them was especially steamy. Even so, the two of them never got married. Back then, standards were different, and even a single scandal was enough to ruin one woman. So, was it really wise for Anita to rack up not one, but multiple scandals? Sure, Anita's European sensibility was partly to blame, but was that excuse enough? Well, as it turned out, all these scandals, combined with Anita's profound beauty, served to make her a favorite of tabloids and gossip magazines. Her image often graced the covers of such publications as Confidential and Playboy. Anita herself played into this media interest to keep herself relevant. As a matter of fact, she once admitted that an incident in which her dress busted open in the lobby of London's Berkeley Hotel was staged with a photographer. With all the hard work Anita poured into crafting her naughty and voluptuous image, she managed to keep herself employed. From the early 50s to the mid 50s, she mostly worked as a model. During his tour of Greenland, comedian Bob Hope invited her to keep American servicemen entertained. Bob was so impressed with Anita that he informed John Wayne of her talent, who then signed her to his Batjack Productions. Finally, Anita was back in Hollywood, earning $75 a week. During this time, she appeared in two TV shows, namely Casablanca and Private Secretary. She also appeared in the movies Blood Alley, Artists and Models, War and Peace, 
Man in the Vault, and Back from Eternity. Paramount Pictures were so excited by her that they marketed her as their version of Marilyn Monroe. Anita had yet to hit the same highs as Marilyn, but she was slowly building her esteem as an actress. After John Wayne left Batjack Productions, Anita's trajectory to the top of Hollywood hit an unexpected snag. But rather than sit around and wait for another opportunity, she decided to explore her options internationally. She went to Italy, where she starred in the movie Sheba and the Gladiator. This opened up the opportunity for her most iconic role. In 1960, the notorious Italian director Federico Fellini was putting together a movie known as La Dolce Vita. He cast Anita in the role of Sylvia Rank, a movie star who visits Italy and drives the paparazzi crazy. This role was very similar to who Anita was in real life. In an iconic scene, she stood inside Rome's Trevi Fountain, along with Marcello Mastroianni, wet and beautiful. The movie was such a major hit that it propelled Anita right to the top of movie stardom. At long last, she was finally an actress worthy of her image. But Anita quickly learned that success of this magnitude was a double-edged sword. In time, she began to regret her role in La Dolce Vita. For one, she resented the fact that people said Fellini made her a star. Anita, always willing to talk about anybody, countered by saying she was the one who made him a star. She also was unhappy with the quality of roles she was receiving after La Dolce Vita became a hit. In her view, many directors merely wanted her to replay the same sort of role again and again and again. Now, was it so wise for Anita to talk so much smack about the directors offering her roles? Sure, she was on top then, but would she remain that way forever? Some advised her to be quiet, but Anita thought she knew better. Only time would tell if she would regret her attitude or not. Despite all of Anita's grumbling about La Dolce Vita, she did star in a number of hit movies in the years since its release. These included Last Train to Shanghai, Behind Closed Doors, and Boccaccio 70. She was also slated to become the first Bond girl, Honey Rider. However, the role went to her rival Ursula Andress instead. In the Bond movie from Russia with Love, the producers make fun of her, alluding to the fact that her big mouth lost her the role. When a villain escapes from a window that is situated at her mouth on a wall-sized poster, Bond quips, she should have kept her mouth shut. The 70s, 80s, and 90s were Anita's most successful decades. However, the older she got, the more her beauty faded. Unlike some of Hollywood's grand dames, Anita wasn't quite as successful in maintaining a great career in her old age. Besides, her reputation for being incredibly rude did not help her much. For all of Anita's affairs, she actually only got married twice, both times to actors. The first was to Anthony Steele for three years. The second was to Rick Van Nutter for 12 years. Interestingly, the two great loves of Anita's life occurred out of wedlock. The first was with Tyrone Power and the second was with Gianni Agnelli. With Tyrone, the two met during her very first movie production. Tyrone, obsessed with her beauty, began an affair with her. Despite the fact that Tyrone was married to Linda Christian, the two of them flaunted their affair. Tyrone even took her to visit his parents in their Cincinnati home. The other great love, and perhaps the one true love, of Anita's life was the Italian industrialist Gianni Agnelli. As the owner of Fiat, he was a very rich man. The two of them were lovers for several years, even though he was married. Eventually, they drifted apart. Anita never had any children of her own. In one interview, she stated she really wanted a few. However, in another interview not too long after the first, she contradicted herself. In any case, with no husband and no children, she was very lonely in her old age. Should Anita have spent less time in her youth being a vixen and more time trying to form lasting relationships? Who's to say? Besides, it was too late now. Her beauty, her greatest asset, was faded. The only things Anita had to comfort her were her pets, but even that backfired. One day, when she was knocked down by one of her Great Danes, she broke her hip. From then on, she had to get around using a wheelchair. She developed so many chronic illnesses that she had to be hospitalized. During this time, her home was robbed of jewelry. Destituti, Anita had to turn to the Felony Institute for financial help. But unfortunately for her, the institute was going through financial troubles of its own. Finally, on 11 January 2015, Anita died from complications of her chronic illnesses. She was 83 years old at the time. Anita Ekberg will undoubtedly always be an icon. 
Women of her beauty are few and far apart. However, one can't help but wonder what her career would have looked like had she been more honorable. Even so, her bad girl image is a huge part of why she is loved. Anita Ekberg did what she had to do and remained unapologetic the whole way through. Though she died poor and lonely, she will forever be a goddess of the screen. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.